What's cracking everybody? Zerfell Rose here bringing you some Pokemon Go Battling content. And in today's video, there is a 100% chance of babies being cute in the background and she's walking around right now, so adorable. And a 100% chance of us going over the Weather Cup in Great League. Now, this is a new cup that we're having come to the Great League and it was a Ultra League meta. I think it was our first limited Ultra League meta, actually. Um, and, well, limited is in like a specialty cup, not like Premier or anything like that. But, um, so, as usual, we're going to talk about the meta in chunks. We're going to go over it by type, as you know that it is a rock, water, ice, and I do believe the other type is fire? Yeah. So, those are going to be the four types in the cup. And so we're going to go over them bit by bit, and then go over the rest of the water types, because I can't fit them all on one page, and that's pretty much like the dominant type in this meta. So, um, that being said, let's let's start with these water types. But before we get started, I just want to put out there that while you're getting this on YouTube, a couple days before the cup, um, my patron Discord and I, we go over these things like weeks in advance. So you could have had everything in this meta that you were looking to use. You could have had notice of it weeks ago and been ready to build it and already had teams ready, which I've already gotten my patron Discord. So if you're interested in that, there's a link in the description to the patron Discord. And I also offer coaching on Metify. So if you're looking to take your game to the next level, trying to figure out the next steps in PVP, uh, for Go Battle League, in, you know, anything in general, uh, go ahead and check the link out in the description. I offer a lot of different courses to just for general improvement as well as just live coaching and, and really anything you can think of so without further ado let's get into the cup here so we're taking a look at the waters here first so lantern is number one in the cup for good reason as you know it recently got that move surf added to its move pool makes it very dominant and because you're sitting here in a meta that's filled with other waters and rock and ice and fire lantern pretty much is a typing combination that beats just about everything else in the cup that's not swampert or a grass type so like that's why there's inherent rps i think lantern is really an rps enabling kind of pokemon just because it's like it's so strong against things but it's also just kind of loses to certain things so you know obviously that's the inherent nature of an rps pokemon but like lantern not being number one you probably expect it to be on just about every team and in kind you'll probably see just about everybody and their mother running grass types so you're gonna see Ludicolo, and you're probably going to see a bomb of snow on a lot of teams, and especially in the Razor Leaf forms, which you'll probably be seeing bashed on double Razor Leaf in this team in this cup as well. But you see the wins and losses here on Lantern. It's, it's you know it's pretty it's pretty cut and dry. You kind of know from your experience in Great League that Lantern is what it is. You can run it with water uh, or electric fast moves and spark and water gun. Excuse me. But you're typically going to run Surf and Thunderbolt on the charge moves, just because Hydro Pump is what's the point anymore, right? So. Um, that being said, though, Swampert is going to be our next water type, which, again, another very strong water type that just about everybody is probably aware of at this point. Um, water Ground is just an extremely strong typing. Obviously, Swampert is as powerful as it is in Great League, not only due to its typing, but its spammy move set in that it has Mud Shot and Hydro Cannon. Those two moves by themselves are able to just decimate so many things. And then having the ability to use Earthquake or Sludge Wave as a secondary charge move for coverage or stab just nu you know, nuke damage is immense. And you can see on this page, there's several things that could be uh, Swampert, but definitely uh, yeah, sw uh, several other things. Sorry about that. Tongue twisters, right? Um, you see Swampert beats so many other things too. Like if you just look at this list, you're going to see let's just see Swampert versus the entire Weather Cup just for just for just for just for just for the heck of it, right? It wins 17 and loses to 8. And there's two draws and it's probably going to be itself and I don't know what else it is, but like there the grass types being that there's literally 3 of them. Araquanid, Pelipper, and you know, there's Jellicent and Quagsire. And Quagsire, even honestly, is probably relying on landing the Earthquake. Very small size of things that can beat Swampert in this meta. So you should expect also to see Swampert on just about every other team because it's going to be out there. Um, so Ludicolo is actually a really fun pick that I think is really interesting. My wife is probably looking at me. Uh, she has uh, war flashbacks of my Ruby from... Uh, yeah, she's looking at me. Oh, there it is. The side eyes. She would maul me right now if she could. Keep, keep that devil and partner away from me. <laughs> dee, 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 dee. Shut up! Oh, goodness gracious woman. Yeah, she doesn't like Ludicolo. Um, so Ludicolo's got Razor Leaf, it's also got Bubble, and it's got uh, Leaf Storm. So it's a very strong grass type in this meta, but also, you know, you have to worry about things like Pelipper and Araquanid that just kind of destroy it. So you kind of give and take, but the Razor Leaf Ludicolo is still super strong. And if you remember, um, in the Ultra League version, Ludicolo and Abomasnow with Razor Leaf were just 
that's when the whole cup started getting degen, but it, you know, it was, still, it was strong for a reason. And Araquanid here is going to be like the main counter to most of these um, water types. It beats Swampert, beats Cradilly, despite having rock typing, beats Abomasnow, beats Ludicolo, and it loses to things that normally hard counter it, right? Fire types, which even Blaziken is, is still a difficult sell because of the fact that I think it has to land a nuke in order to take out the Araquanid. Um, Lantern only wins because of the Thunderbolt and Spark. Bastion is Bastion, obviously. Pelipper completely resists the entire moveset. Toxapex also, I think, completely resists the entire moveset. So, like, that's another one of those things that's probably, like, very few losses. So, this one is 15 and 11 with a one with one draw. And it beats almost everything that's not a hard, hard counter to it. So, Araquanid's going to be strong, I feel like. So, next up on the list, we got Pelipper. So Pelipper, you guys all know, got the wing attack update, very strong, but unfortunately in metas that have things like Lantern in them, it becomes a very RPS and very risky Pokemon to use, so you would end up wanting to use this probably in the lead or something, um, and then end up trying to use two pivots that have answers to Lantern in the back. But Pelipper completely destroys Swampert, destroys, you know, Blaziken, and Blaziken is going to be used because it's something that beats Perdilly, something that beats, you know, not anything on this page particularly because it's a fire type, but it beats a lot of things. Um, and Pelipper's spamminess allows it to overcome a lot of matchups that normally are kind of rough for it, and having Hurricane or Blizzard also helps it. So we got Pelipper and then Toxapex. I think Toxapex is going to be one of the strongest safe switches in this meta. Um, really bulky, really, really, really annoying to deal with. It's ridiculous. Um, Swampert is going to beat it, Bastion is going to sort of beat it, Lantern's going to beat it, but like the list of things that beat this Pokemon are fairly small. Um, again, it's got Swampert Syndrome in that like it's literally got 16 wins and 10 losses. Like there's not a whole lot of things in this meta that are really equipped to handle it. And the things that are equipped to handle it, you may not see as much of. Now Lantern, obviously you're gonna see plenty of Lantern. Where are you gonna see the Lantern? We don't know. We're gonna wait and see. But you know, things like Frost Slash, Lone Sand Slash, Swampert, Whiskash, those are gonna be things that are gonna be able to be, she's literally right under me. Um, you're gonna be able to see those things in the meta. So you have to use your Toxapex with care because a lot of the top things in the meta do beat it, but it's still very strong as an anti sort of like not anti-meta, but it's like an anti-anti-meta, right? Because the things that beat the Swampert and the um, Lantern, like things like Ludicolo, they get kind of shredded by Toxapex. So. Um, we got Polyrath, I think is really interesting in this meta. Now, when I look at Polyrath, I think of something that can beat Cradilly and something that can beat um, other water types, right? Like Swampert, because it's got that dynamic punch, um, can beat uh, you know some of these things. Now, there's a lot of things on this page that Polyrath can't beat, like Ludicolo or Araquanid or Pelipper. Uh, probably not Toxapex either, but has play against those top two, and those are the important water staff play against. The rest are kind of, you try your best. Quagsire, though, I think. Quagsire is just... <laughs> Quagsire beats Lantern, it beats Araquanid, it beats the Pelipper, it, I'm pretty sure it beats Pelipper, and it beats uh, Toxapex, and it, you know what, I don't even know if it beats uh, Polyrath, but I bet it does. Quagsire, to me, is like low-key, probably one of the strongest Pokemon in this cup, right? Look at this. It beats Swampert, it beats Bastion, obviously, beats Lantern, beats Toxapex, beats Sandslash, doesn't really have much play against Cradilly, and I think Blaziken only beats it because it takes so long for Quagsire to get to its charge moves. But Quagsire's gonna be good. The Swagsire will return. He's coming back. So let's talk about the next page. So we've got the ice types on this page. Some of the strongest ice types in the meta. And I, I really didn't go all in on like everything. There are definitely a lot of Pokemon that aren't on these lists that are not here because I doubt you're going to see them. You see Regice at number 21, you're probably not going to see a Regice in this meta, so I left it out intentionally. If you see one, look it up. It's good to know how to deal with it, but you're probably not going to see one. There you are, playing with the, playing with the clothes, you silly girl. Obama Snow is the top threat in this meta as far as ice types go. Ice and grass typing make it very dangerous, have a lot of play against a lot of the meta. Uh, 
fire types destroy it, which there are a few. Um, rock types have a lot of play against it, but as far as things like Swampert, Lantern, um, you know, even Cradilly has to be afraid of the Obama Snow because it's super effective damage from uh, the ice type attacks. She's so cute. Um, but speaking of ice types too, you've got Sand Slash, Yellow and Sand Slash, which was an absolute menace in Ultra League because there weren't as many things up there to beat it. Basically, as long as it wasn't aligned to a Blaziken, you were fine. Um, in the Great League version, there might be a few things that are actually a bit better equipped to handle it, but honestly, I feel like the Alone Sand Slash is gonna be a really solid pick in this meta, as long as you can keep it away from things like Lantern and Swampert. So, because you didn't see as many Lantern up in the Ultra League, that might be why it had a better time up there. Plus you saw more things like, you know, Tentacruel and, you know, the grass types and things that it could really just manhandle. But uh, Wall Rain is a tried and true pick. It's number 52 in this cup though. So you're, you know, like the ice types teeter off real fast after Alone and Sand Slash. We go from 23 down to 52. But these are still gonna be picks that are gonna be in this meta, so you should be aware of them. Frostlass, Walrein, uh, Aurorus, Lapras, Dugong, Ninetales. All of them are ones that we have seen in the past, right? So Frostlass is obviously going to be the Avalanche Shadow Ball. Give it some energy and it sweeps your whole team kind of Pokemon. Um, Aurorus, you've had plenty of exposure to over the over the course of the uh, past few weeks with this channel, probably many others. Meteor Beam is broken and Aurorus is bulky enough to make it work. Uh, Dugong has the Ice Shard, Icy Wind debuff move set that makes it just so obnoxious and a ton of bulk to go with it. Lapras, super bulky, has water coverage, ice coverage, and neutral normal coverage. So it can be definitely usable in a lot of metas. And then, especially this one, because having that ice water typing is just like, it can handle a lot of the typings on a basic level. Now, obviously, when we're talking about what does Lapras and Wall Rain handle, um, they're not going to do so well against the rock types necessarily because they have coverage against the ice typing. But at least Lapras, for example, will have a water type move to hit back. You know, Walrein has Earthquake to hit back those rock types, so they have play here. Um, and then Alola Ninetales, you already know plenty about Alola Ninetales. You can run it with the Charm version or you can run it with Powder Snow. Either way, it's a very strong Pokemon and has a lot of play here. Um, for the most part, you're probably going to want to play it in such a way that you keep it protected against Toxapex, probably be its hardest answer in this meta. Uh, that and Alolan Sand Slash. So if you can keep a team, maybe pair it with Swampert. The Alolan Ninetales and Swampert core is very strong in this meta, I feel like. So that'll be a good one to kind of keep your keep your mind wrapped around. So next, got the rock types. Yes, the rock types. We've got Cradilly coming back as one of the strongest rock types, if not the strong. I think it's the strongest rock type. Yeah, number two, an XL Lilip is number four. Now, the thing with XL Lilip is you can only get a Bullet Seed Lilip if you happen to TM it during a very specific window way back in the, in the past. So it's unobtainable. So if you don't have one, I don't have one. Sucks to suck, I guess. I also have that same issue. I suck. So nothing personal. I have it too. I don't have a Lilip. I don't wish they did to be kind of interesting. Uh, but Cradilly is going to be good because it has that move set to deal basically neutral or super effective damage to just about everything in the entire cup, right? So Grass Knot and Stone Edge together are basically going to be um, coverage against the entire meta, which is why Cradilly is ranked so high. So Bastion. Yeah, we know about Bastion. What do you know about Bastion? I know that I hate Bastion. It's a very bulky rock steel type. It's very linear. doesn't really have any dynamic ability to it, but um, it sure as heck can be frustrating, especially when it gets lined up against something and then you have an opponent that has an RPS backline that you can't overcome because you weren't expecting to be Bastiodon and Grasshold. So yes, Bastiodon is still functioning just the same in this cup as it does in just about any other with a double grass backline. It can be very strong. Um, also can use something like Cradilly to lure out the counter user or other uh, thing that could beat Blaziken or the like, well, Blaziken would be what you're luring out, but you could then use that to lure out the uh, issue that the Bastion doesn't want to see. You can always use Regirock for that purpose as well. Um, I like another Rock Steel type in this meta though. I don't like Bastion. Bastion just infuriates me. Every time I touch it, I lose. I just don't like it. Regirock. Let's talk about Regirock. You probably have one if you were around a long while ago. The only way that you were going to get one is if you were playing during the time when legendaries were in the uh, weekly boxes. Otherwise, 
you may have had to trade for one. I had to trade for one. I have one. Crappy IVs, though. But Stone Edge is so fast. So fast. And Focus Blast just hits so much of this meta for neutral or super effective damage that if you have a Great League Regirock, this may not be a terrible place to use it. Um, Crustal, I feel like, is also very interesting. If you look at a lot of the meta, um, especially when it comes to the fire and rock and, uh, not rock, uh, the fire and ice types, Crustal could be a very interesting pick once the meta settles in and you kind of get to see what's what. Now, an interesting pick that I picked just because there's really not a whole lot of rock types that I haven't already listed somewhere in this video is, uh, was it Tyrant? Tyrant. It has Dragon Claw and Ancient Power for its charge and it has Dragon Tail. So it's not a bad move set. It's a pretty spammy move set. I don't think that Tyrant has very much stats to back it up though. It's a pretty, like, it's, it's, it's kind of glassy, but it has a good spammy move set. And there's not a whole lot of fairies in this meta. There's a Zoomeral, and I think that's really about it. Um, maybe there's others. Uh, there's uh, Alone Nine Tails, I suppose, yeah, but it also takes super effective damage from the Ancient Power. Um, I just, I think it's a really sneaky pick as well for this meta because there's not as many things that can hard resist it. And it can overwhelm some stuff, I'm not going to lie. If I had one built, I would probably play it. Be kind of fun and aurorus would also be on this page but it was on the last page so i put a mora in its place very similar to aurorus it just doesn't have meteor beam it has um powder snow weather ball ancient power and thunderbolt just look on the rankings it'd probably be easier for me but it functions in a similar vein to aurorus but doesn't have meteor Beam. basically probo pass mustachio himself is the interesting pokemon that i find in this now Here's the thing with Probo Pass, right? It's the same typing as Bastion, far less bulky, but it has an actual like non-linear moveset. You could run it with Thunderbolt, or you could run it with Rock Slide, or you could run it with Magnet Bomb. Now, in this particular meta, I think that all three of those moves are going to have a lot of play, and I think that you can pick one based on the meta that you're seeing. But I'm certainly interested in trying to figure out a team that uses Probo Pass because, man, that it's just it just looks like it would be something that would be fun to use. I don't know. But Probo Pass does obviously lose to most of the water types given its typing. Can't really overcome Cordelia unless it's running Meteor. Not Meteor. Uh, Magna Bomb. And also not going to be able to overcome the Shadow of Bomb of Snow if it lands that energy ball. So your, your Probo Pass is, like we said, far less bulky and far less like linear and fast move pressury than Bastion is, but it can still fill a similar role. It just kind of depends on, like I said, the meta that you're seeing in your, in your ELO range might really dictate what you're using. But let's talk about the last group of typings here, and this is going to be the fire. And now you can see, like, this very quickly goes from spice to spice. There's not really a whole lot in the fire side of this meta that really can do much right you got a meta that's going to be full of lantern and swampert and rock types like i feel like rock is probably or fire is probably the typing that loses out here the most um you could play like blaziken and charizard and i think the li the list just kind of ends there right victini is really fun and i love it but having v create and psychic does not get it away from things like swampert and doesn't really give it any play against those hard counters, right? You're just going to be throwing V-Creates and hoping that you get shields or something, and that's just not the kind of Pokemon that I want to use right now. Shadow Lola and Marowak is also on the list. I should probably actually pull up the rankings now that I'm talking about the fire types. Um, but, like, you can see we go from 22 to 60, like, very quickly. Like, these Pokemon are not well-ranked, so you may, you may see them. You know, if people are, like, going crazy and safe-swapping all their Cordillas, then you might see a lot of people playing Blaziken in, as a result. Or you might see people playing other Pokemon that are specifically geared to beat those Pokemon. But, for the most part, there's so many water types in this meta. Like, this, this meta is going to be predominantly the water types and the water subtypes because of just how many there are and how versatile the typing itself is, that unfortunately, if you go past Blaziken and Charizard, you're probably not gonna see very much. And even Charizard is ranked 60 plus, like it's still not that great. So we'll just kind of take that how it is. But if you are looking to run some fire types, I think these are the top eight that I would pick. Um, Blaziken is obviously the hardest possible counter you can get to um, things like the rock and ice types because it has counter and it has blaze kick and it has the ability to use like stone edge blaze uh, blast burn or brave bird you have a lot of options as far as the nuke goes there um, I'm not really 
seeing much past that. I mean, even Charizard, like, gets railed by Lantern, gets railed by, you know, Zoomerol and other things of that nature. I just don't see this as a Charizard type of meta, but I know that there are going to be people out there who use it because someone's going to run... Um, the Bastion double grass team and people are going to be like, all right, well then I'm going to run Swampert double fire, you know, and just do stuff like that. Or, you know, it's the stuff that doesn't necessarily make as much sense, but I digress. So let's, let's not spend too much more time on the fires because I don't, you know, you can, I'll, I'll let you guys look up the moves that these don't really fill a role in the meta. This page literally exists because the fire typing is highlighted as part of this meta. But I just don't I don't I don't honestly see these Pokemon having any use outside of just specifically countering the razor levers. So instead I'd like to talk a little bit more about some of the more interesting water types in this meta. So Kingdra comes in on top of my list here. Kingdra was really, really good in the Ultra League version. And in the Great League version, it still has play. And the reason why is because it can just it can just deal with um things like Swampert. And it can deal with things like Lantern, I think. No, Lantern. Yeah, Lantern's listed as a win. It does beat Cradilly. It beats all the fire types because it double resists fire damage. It can beat Jellicent. And I know that the wins get even more as you go down the list. Pelipper has to land a Hurricane. Swampert has to land an Earthquake. Abomasnow probably beats it pretty handily because you can't get to an Outrage and be fine with that. Ludicolo probably... Abomasnow and Ludicolo are here because they have Razor Leaf. And that just outdoes the damage of Dragon Breath. But Kingdra is... A very interesting and strong pick for this meta, and I dig it. So let's look at I look Politoed next. Now Politoed is at number 18 and 26. You have a shadow and non-shadow respectively. Um, again, we're destroying all the water types. Destroys Bastion, which is what we're okay with here. Um, the Earthquake can potentially handle Lantern, but I think you have to have the shadow in order to one-shot a Lantern with an Earthquake. If you have the non-shadow, it's just a little bit shy, and the Lantern is going to land Thunderbolt on you. Um, but like the winds here, Charizard, all, like all the fires, Bastion, Sand Slash. If you're seeing things like that, good. Now, um, it can tussle with a Swampert, but Swampert will definitely out damage it, especially if it gets the Earthquake. The Earthquake on the Swampert is stab damage. Probably not going to have much luck there. But the uh, Toxapex most likely just out bulks the Politoed despite landing an Earthquake. It probably doesn't do nearly enough to actually KO. So you end up having to land two, and then the Toxapex just farms you down. Um, Quillfish, I thought, is always... I, I, I love Quillfish, let's be honest here. Quillfish is one of the more interesting picks to me because it has, like, a toolbox moveset, and it can beat the Razor Leafers because of Sludge Wave. Now, you have to obviously land it. Your opponent shields it, you're probably done for. But Lantern, Swampert, Sand Slash, Bastion, those things that resist the poison, Aqua Tail is not going to be enough, but you can definitely fight back against Bastion. Look how close that is. 445 rating, I guarantee you that if you were up a shield, those Aqua Tails, you're going to be able to beat a Bastion pretty easily with uh, Quillfish. So let's take a look here. All right. So yeah, if Quillfish has a shield advantage, it beats Bastion pretty nicely. Um, you, you basically, you just lose here because the opponent gets the move. But look how close you are in the one shield. They're down to 15 HP. It's pretty close to a KO. So one more Aqua Tail would do it there. You get an extra shield, you're golden. Um, Empoleon, speaking of things that beat Bastion, which is honestly probably going to be half the waters in this cup or ones that you want to beat Bastion with, uh, also has play against those grass types with Drill Pack. So it's a really good safe swap sort of Pokemon. It's also a really good Bastion counter. So you go like Empoleon, double something that beats the grass types if you really want to RPS that team. Um, but it's, again, going to lose to Swampert, Lantern, Ludicolo is going to be able to out-damage it with the Razor Leaves. Pelipper actually does win if it lands the Hurricane uh, because of the just pacing of the moves for Empoleon. It's not as great. I also just realized this entire time that I haven't had my Weather Cup symbol up, and that's a disgrace. And I need to fix that right now in the middle of the video where I can actually just kind of put that up here. So let's, uh, <laughs> let's just throw that up on here real quick before we uh, forget. Look! Now we're talking about the weather cup. Look at that. I'm not going to go back and edit this. I've already spent way too long on this stupid video. <laughs> She's looking at me like you're weird. Jellicent. Jellicent is really interesting to me as well. I don't like ice. I like ice beam Jellicent. I don't like uh, bubble beam Jellicent. But you want something that beats Toxapex, beats Swampert, Beats the fire types, but loses to Lantern, Bastion, Cradilly, Sandslash, and Pelipper. 
Well, Jellicent, Jellicent Shaman. Now, Jellicent is really interesting here, and the reason for that is because it's able to sort of, you know, break apart some of the main stuff in the meta. So, obviously, it's going to lose to the Razor Leafers, right? It's going to lose to Lantern, but it has a lot of play when it comes to everything else. So, if, if at some point Lantern, the Razor Leafers, and some of the other stuff that just destroys it, you know, fall out of the meta in favor of maybe some of these picks even, uh, Jellicent could do really well. Mantine is another pick that I think is a really interesting one, but again, it's going to have the same issue that Pelipper has, and that's just going to straight lose to Lantern. But if you're looking for something, again, we're, we're, we're loving the things that can beat Swampert. Um, but Bastion, Toxapex, Cordillion, Sandslash kind of top up the loss list. But it beats all of the grass types. So if you're looking for something that can beat the grass and Swampert, that's a good place to go in Mantine. Pelipper also, but Mantine is much more bulky and has Ice Beam. Whereas Pelipper has Weather Ball, which isn't going to be as much help. Hi, do you want to come up and help me? Hello. Do you want to come up and help me? Hello. She's back. Seeking, though. I think I was looking through the rankings and I, I, I plucked out Seeking. Because look at this moveset. Okay. Has Drill Run to beat the Bastion. Has Poison Jab to, beat, to fight back against the Grass types. Has Icy Wind to fight back against some of the non-straight water types. Also the fire flying, other flyers, grass type. It's, it's, seeking has a very interesting moveset. I would not be surprised if somebody came out with their seeking that we haven't touched in ye almost years at this point. I think I might try it. I have legend privilege here. Oh, baby, don't get upset. I, am, I, I fortunately have legend privilege, so I can test it for all of you. In case it really does work, we'll see. But, um, and I, I, I flex my legend privilege because I, I proud of it okay i know that not everybody's there but you'll you, you will get there eventually i have faith in you just keep plugging away and keep practicing your mechanics and your game plan i know you'll get there tentacruel is in a similar vein as um sea king in that it's a water type with the poison jab but it doesn't have ice coverage and it doesn't have ground coverage so you're kind of in a different boat as far as coverage there and apparently i'm typing backwards um i have no idea what's happening with my keyboard right now let's try it again Tentacruel. Okay. Tentacruel is at number 63. You're definitely probably not going to play this. It has Acid Spray in this meta, and it loses to most of the top meta, but beats the Grass types, and it also beats Fire types. So, it's again, another thing that's going to wait until the meta kind of devolves into a specific way. If you see a lot of the Grass Holy sort of teams, it'd be a good Pokemon to run. Has the ability to throw Scald back at that Bastiodon. Um, does very well when it comes to like straight farming something down because acid spray so tentacle has play i think it's, it's just more interesting these are the interesting picks and now obviously some honorable mentions here zoomeral and Tapu Fini are not on here because i expect the grass types to take over for the most part and if you're not getting beat by the grass types you're going to be beat by toxapex so i just don't feel like Tapu Fini and zoomeral are very safe in this meta so We'll uh, finish up here talking about some cores and hopefully clock this baby in under 30 minutes. So um, first core is the <laughs> the Bastiodon Grass Core. Don't really need to talk about this one. It's been around for years at this point. Um, but essentially anything that beats Bastion gets Razor Leafed into Oblivion and vice versa. Most of the things that beat Bastiodon get destroyed. Most of the things that beat the Razor Leafers get beat by Bastion. So it's an endless RPS cycle of degenerosity or whatever the word, degeneracy, I don't know what the word is, but anyway, I hate the core and I'm not touching it. Cordillion Lantern, go plug those two in on the PV Poke Team Builder and tell me what you see. Straight A's. So if you build a team around this core, it's gonna be good. Now, again, it's very, it's very rps -y core and it does have a couple of things, I believe um, Kingdra might be able to break it. Kingdra's one of the few things that breaks that core. But not a lot of people are going to be running Great League Kingdra, so there's that. You just want to get really close to the camera and be cute, don't you? That's the entire reason you're up here. Yes, it is. Yes, it is, Dad. I'm up here because I'm cute. Yes. And uh, another couple of cores that I found, the Swampert Flyer Flying core, very, very strong. That's going to be one of those cores that you're going to see when the uh, meta devolves into Grass Wall territory. So that's going to be an rps -y sort of, oh, look at me, I've got... Um, Swampert double fire flying, which you could easily separate, you know, into um, other flying types, maybe ones that beat Pelipper, because Pelipper and Mantine will just destroy that team. 
Um, and then the Quagsire Blaziken core, I thought, was a really interesting one and one that you might want to try out if you're really trying to core break stuff, right? Like, Blaziken is really strong and can just destroy certain things. Obviously, also gets destroyed against certain things, but um, Quagsire is a very, very good Pokemon for trying to break apart things like the Bastiodon Abomasnow core, for example, um, or the uh, Lantern cores you know stuff like that so just just experiment and see what works for you but these are some examples and then you got some safe swaps right again i talked about it i like seeking as a safe swap it could also be a you know a lead or something with the icy wind i like it a lot in this meta um if you have a lily i think it would be a good safe swap if you're trying to draw out something to beat your own cordilly um or maybe the bastion and then um i think that a and toxapex are very good Pokemon for drawing out their hardest counters while being able to set up a farm scenario for your lead, um, especially Arachwinded because of the bubble beams. Um, also has the ability to flip some matchups in certain situations if you try hard enough, but um, they also are really good at drawing out the Bastion that might be in the back. Now, uh, so, all right, you're being a crazy but I think we've talked enough about the Weather Cup. Your forecast is wins. We all wish you well in the Weather Cup, and I hope you guys have a good one. And we'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye. Saying bye-bye, Maggie. Bye-bye.